Okay, hello. <laughs> this is Dr. Hudson, and today um, we have the pleasure of talking with Mr. Bob Brocious, and he is the Dean of Admission at Dubuque University. So, hello, Mr. Brocious. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for having me, Dr. Hudson. Yes. It's good to talk with you again. Yes, and uh, the chuckles are because we thought we were taping this, and we weren't. So we've started over, and um, hopefully everything will go smoothly this time. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, we've known Mr. Brocious for several years now. He's um, He's been a wonderful asset for our, our SAWS school in particular, but for Dodea. So we're very glad to have you talk to us today and, and give some information for our parents and our students. Glad to be here, yeah. I, I think uh, that's an important point to make, uh, Dr. Hudson. We have been uh, involved in, in working with DOT students for, uh, my gosh, uh, 17, 18 years now. Uh, you know, it all started when I visited a few schools in Europe and then expanded that into the Pacific. And we had a chance to uh, visit Seoul American High School many times over the years. And uh, I uh, was the director of international admission at that time, uh, traveling all around the world, uh, spending uh, between eight and 12 weeks a year on the road outside of the country, visiting with students uh, in the fall, typically uh, doing classroom presentations and helping people learn about the admission process yes. and about the University of Dubuque. And then in the spring, uh, we try to do a follow-up visit with students who've applied for admission. Can't always do that, but, but we've tried to do that some. Uh, in fact, our international admission counselor, who I've hired uh, to replace me, is uh, packing his bags this evening for a flight tomorrow morning to uh, London Heathrow Airport, where he'll begin uh, a two-week trip to Europe meeting with applied students. So uh, the, the numbers are sufficient in the application pool there to warrant our, our uh, return trip there this spring. Unfortunately, we can't be everywhere. Uh, right. So I'm not sure we're going to make a trip to the Pacific this spring, but uh, it doesn't mean we're not interested in your students. We certainly are, and we'd be happy to uh, uh, communicate with them uh, by Skype or by any other method that we can to help them learn about the, the opportunities at the University of Dubuque. Great. And our, our conversations have always been uh, about uh, helping students figure out the process uh, and really focused on uh, helping students to learn uh, what to do and how to manage the, the uh, uh, college search process from far away and uh, how to best pr present themselves to colleges. And uh, those students who we find that are interested in the University of Dubuque, of course, will help them find their place here as well. Yes. Yeah. And I can vouch for that. You guys have been a great asset for our school. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. So let's start broad and let's talk about um, the bigger picture of Dubuque, of the University of Dubuque. So tell us about yourself. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, the University of Dubuque is a small private liberal arts university with a focus in the professional programs. We really do uh, prepare students for work immediately following graduation or for a professional school. Um, you can uh, it, you, you might think about that in terms of going on to medical school or going on to law school uh, or going to another graduate program. In, in sociology or psychology oftentimes uh, our graduates will be doing that as well. Uh, the other area is, is preparing students for work immediately following graduation, uh, just you know preparing them for their specific profession, whether it's being an accountant or whether it's being a professional pilot, for example. As you'll recall, we have uh, an aviation program here at the University of Dubuque. That's a little bit uncommon. Not every school will have that. Um, we, we have about 200 students flying airplanes here at the University of Dubuque and about 30 airplanes in our fleet. Uh, that includes both fixed wing airplanes and also now we're uh, training helicopters. Um, so we're teaching students how to fly helicopters. And another new program, the Applied Aviation Technology Program includes the building and flying of drones. Oh, nice. So another uh, really growing area, very, very popular, a lot of jobs in that field. Uh, you know, again, 
we're focused on preparing students for getting jobs. Uh, teacher education is very popular here. Uh, the business field, all of the areas in business are, are uh, full. Um, I would say nursing, also very popular, very important, obviously, to our, our healthcare industry. And uh, we recently opened for our very first class this past fall in our new physician assistant program. Oh. So we're training, we have a graduate program in physician assistant. And so uh, our students can come as first year students and work their way into uh, a graduate program in physician assistant, which is fantastic because as you know, and uh, most people know that our healthcare uh, uh, system is in really uh, short handed for medical practitioners. Yes. And uh, physician assistant really fits in that, that uh, place where we're really critically short on doctors and uh, they can really f backfill some of the requirements. And oftentimes you see a PA when you go to the doctor right. because, because there's just not enough doctors to go around. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to, to uh, get into that area and offer that to our students as well. Uh, we're a, a, a unique school in that we really focus on uh, preparing students for really who they're going to be more than what they're going to be. And I'll just talk about that briefly. At the University of Dubuque, it's, it's our uh, belief that uh, who you are has a greater impact on how you can contribute to the world. And so where you're going to work and how so how successful you're going to be, how successful you're going to be in your family life and in, in your community, you know, in, in every aspect of your life really depends on that. So we have a specific focus in character education and developing pe students personal character. And uh, we focus on uh, really the whole person as they go through their educational experience at the University of Dubuque. Uh, certainly, again, preparing them for a profession, but making sure that they're ready to go out and uh, be successful wherever they're going to go. And we also have a success commitment uh, that we enter into an agreement with our students. If they agree to work hard and uh, do all of the things that we ask them to do, we will be committed to their success. And uh, all of that is measurable, and, and we can show students you know, what their potential is when they graduate and where they're going to be going and all of that. But that's really super important. I think that the, the, our diamond educational model, which is a holistic approach of, of uh, uh, education, and then the, the success commitment, I think, combined together are really quite important. Yeah. Uh, and also should mention we're affiliated with the Presbyterian Church. We're, uh, 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 we encourage students to consider how faith fits into their life. And, and we uh, really uh, encourage students to uh, treat one another uh, uh, as they would treat, uh, as they would like to be treated. And, uh, you know, they can take part in uh, youth ministries and those types of programs if they're interested, but those programs are not required. Mm -hmm. So again, encouraging students to consider how faith fits into their life. And uh, that's a little bit about the University of Dubuque. Okay, great. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the community that surrounds uh, the University of Dubuque. Sure. Yeah, the city of Dubuque itself is about uh, 65,000 people, uh, very comfortable, kind of middle-sized Midwestern city. It's located right on the Mississippi River, a beautiful city uh, at the intersection of Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. And it's about three and a half hour drive from Chicago. So when you fly into Chicago Hare Airport, you can take a, a connection. There's a connection about three times a, a, a day to Dubuque, Iowa, to the Dubuque Regional Airport from Chicago O'Hare. Uh, but you can you can drive it as well. And oftentimes I'll drive it after I uh, fly into Chicago. But again, it's about three and a half hours. Uh, a very comfortable city. Uh, two other colleges located in the city, uh, some real rivalries, if you will, you know, uh, in our in our athletics. That's uh, but about five. Uh, what's that? That's important. Yeah. 
<laughs> it is important, of yeah. course, because that gives you school spirit. Yes. And uh, I've witnessed that at uh, Seoul American High School many times. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so you guys certainly have rivalries on the peninsula. Right. Go yeah, Falcons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. It's exactly the same. And uh, there's about 5,000 students in the city, which means that there's, um, again, critical mass, you know, so that students are, are, are uh, studying at the University of Dubuque, about 1,700 undergraduate students here, uh, about 2,000 total students when you count uh, uh, graduate programs and, and some of our adult evening programs that we offer. Uh, but the, in the community itself, a lot more students to interact with. So students find that comfortable. They like that. Uh, lots of things to do in the city, uh, entertainment, recreation, uh, shopping, uh, part-time jobs in the community, things like that, certainly all available. Um, you know, students can bring cars to campus. They don't have to have a car. Uh, oftentimes, we, we have learned over the years, Dodds graduates don't always have their driver's license, or right. they don't always have a car. Right. But, uh, you know, there's a city bus that can, you can get around the city and learn that system. And it's not as comprehensive as it is in South Korea, I guarantee you that, but uh, it's it's functional. Uh, certainly meets the students' needs. You could go shopping, or you could go to a movie. They have a, a a night bus that runs on the weekends, on Friday and Saturday, late at night. So you know, students can take advantage of that. Um, the city is well known for uh, being a comfortable place to live and raise a family. Uh, great opportunities for employment, a very diverse economy, which really was not hit very hard from the uh, downturn in the economy several years ago because there's so much diversity in the economy, different types of businesses. You have um, insurance businesses and technology. Uh, IBM is here in, in Dubuque and uh, uh, Eagle Window and Doors uh, Manufacturing. John Deere has a, a very large manufacturing plant here in the city. Uh, there's some publishing companies in the city and other service organizations, service-related uh, companies as well. So really a nice mix of economy that provides great opportunities for our students for internships and for uh, jobs when they graduate. In fact, uh, I've mentioned in the past, I know we've talked about Many uh, students have come to the University of Dubuque from Dodds High Schools all over the world and, and decided to stay in Dubuque, you know. Maybe they met their spouse here. Right. You know, they, they got a great job here, and they just decided Dubuque was a great place. I recall uh, one of my students' comment was, you know, Dubuque was the place where they had lived the longest in their life when they graduated from college. Yeah. And so it felt like home to them. Right. And I felt like, you know, when I, I saw their, her parents at, uh, at commencement and I had learned that she was planning to stay in Dubuque, she had gotten a nice job. And uh, her, I felt a little bit guilty when I, I was talking with her parents and she had told her parents she wasn't going to move home with them. <laughs> It was a great situation for her, right. and she's fantastic. In fact, she's gone on to get her master's degree, and she often teaches in our uh, undergraduate program here in communication. So that's, that's awesome. kind of fun to see her around. Too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's a great place to go to school. Yeah. Awesome. So moving back on campus, um, yeah. what are some of the things um, that are available for a student to do on campus? Well, intercollegiate athletics for your uh, student athletes that want to pursue that at the next level. Mm -hmm. And we do offer intercollegiate sports in, in almost every sport. Uh, uh, we offer uh, traditional fall sports, uh, cross country, and uh, women's tennis, women's golf, uh, of course, football, volleyball, uh, men's and women's soccer. All of those sports are in the fall. And then uh, in the winter sports, you have of course, basketball, men's and women's basketball, wrestling, um, indoor track and field. We have a beautiful indoor track and field facility, uh, six-lane, 200-meter indoor track. In fact, I'll do a little bragging. Our uh, men's track team just won the conference championship, oh, okay. and they qualified uh, a total men's and women's. I think they qualified six athletes to go to the national track and field indoor track and field meet which is this weekend so oh, uh, they'll be in chicago for that so that's really exciting yes. and actually i would say it's the very first time 
that the University of Dubuque has ever won the indoor track and field uh, championship for the conference oh. in the history of the school. So it was a very big deal. Congratulations. Yeah, so we're pretty excited. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was fun. And then, uh, of course, uh, spring sports are now beginning. Uh, that is uh, baseball and softball, as you would expect, and outdoor track and field. Uh, and then uh, uh, we have the opposite golf and opposite tennis. We have men's tennis and, and men's golf in the spring. And then uh, finally, uh, new to the campus a few years ago, but uh, we've been playing a few years now, and that's men's and women's lacrosse. Mm-hmm. So lacrosse is a big growing sport in the U.S. now, and lots and lots of high schools are playing it. And, uh, you know, so we're able to offer that to our student athletes as well. But in addition to that, intercollegiate sports, of course, you have intramural sports and, you know, there's lots and lots of activities for students to keep active physically. And then you go into other areas of interest, you know, uh, whether it's fine and performing arts, a beautiful new $30 million performing arts center, a beautiful facility that offers uh, students the opportunity to be involved in music either uh, choral or instrumental music, uh, theater, uh, beautiful, beautiful theater, a thousand seat auditorium, uh, an amazing performance venue uh, for students to perform in. Dance is also an option for those students. Uh, The building includes a black box theater, which is fantastic, a very unique setting. Uh, And then it also has a cyber cafe where a lot of students will grab a lunch or get a late night snack. Uh, our our uh, mail center is located in that building. Uh, a little art gallery. Uh, oh. Also, the um, uh, convenience store, so students can get their laundry detergent or get a few snacks or whatever. And then, uh, of course, uh, every good college has an ice cream shop. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. And all that's included. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. So a lot of other clubs and organizations to be involved with, uh, whether it's uh, International Friendship Club or uh, whether it's the the fishing club, which competes nationally. Uh, In fact, they're out this weekend. They're going off to uh, Tennessee to compete. Last year, they finished in the top 10 in the nation, in fact, in collegiate collegiate bash fishing. Believe that or not. That's (laughs) That's pretty cool. (laughs) But uh, fraternities and sororities, are really, uh, a lot of students are very interested in those areas, and, and those are very popular. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really a lot to do in addition to um, studying at the, at the university. Student uh, work study, of course. Lots of students have jobs on campus, and we employ a lot of students here in the Office of Admission, and there are a lot of other places that students can get jobs as well. Awesome. Okay, so... The University of Dubuque sounds like an awesome school. I want to come. I'm going to apply. What would be like the minimum requirements I would need? Yeah, I'll I'll tell you what our I'll I'll tell you what our minimum is to be considered as a regular admission. Okay, so regular admission requires that you have a 2.5 grade point average and a 17 ACT. That's to be regularly admitted without any conditions, if you will, okay? So those are the minimums. Now, we always look at the whole person in the admission process. Uh, And and when I say that, I mean that in in the truest sense. We, uh, uh, students fill out their application online or they submit the Common Application. We're also a member of the Common App. We'll look at the application in its entirety, all of the background information about the student that they've submitted. We'll look at their uh, letters of recommendations from teachers. We'll look at their personal statement or their essay. We'll uh, look at their high school transcript. And really, we will dig into their high school transcript. Uh, We'll look at the coursework that they've taken, the specific sequence of the courses, you know, the, the the various uh, levels of English and math and science that they've completed. And, uh, you know, we'll just look to see if they've, they've really prepared for college. And uh, we're going to look at individual grades in all of those courses. You know, there's a lot of factors involved in uh, students' 
uh, high school academic career that we take into consideration. Uh, we look at the ACT or the SAT, and we look at that for um, uh, its sole purpose of giving us an impression of what the student's potential might be. Mm. And I use the word might be because at the University of Dubuque, we do still require students to submit the score, but we look at that in uh, respect to the ACT or the SAT as a moment in time. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that it isn't the, it isn't the end all or be all for every student. For some students, the test is very challenging because they have test anxiety or they just don't, um, they don't test well for some other reason. Um, you know, there, there can be a lot of different factors. Maybe they just had a bad day, you know, uh, they might have broken up with their girlfriend that morning and now they're just having a hard time focusing and this happens and we understand that. So, so again, looking at the whole person, we, we make an admission decision based on those factors. And uh, we have students, of course, who apply to the University of Dubuque with those credentials. We have students with much better credentials than that, of course. Uh, we have a, a, a lot of students, uh, we have a really large number of students who uh, qualified for our honors program this year. And so we're really excited about that. Um, and those would be students with grade point averages of 3.5 or higher. Okay. So cumulative grade point average, 3.5 they would be a candidate to be encouraged to uh, consider being part of our honors program here at the University of Dubuque. Uh, on the other side of that, if they didn't meet those requirements, the, the minimum requirements for regular admission, we do have what we call a bridge program at the University of Dubuque. So if we see potential in a student who didn't have those requirements, then we would consider offering them a place in our bridge program. And our bridge program then becomes a condition of their admission, and they are required, those students are required to participate fully in the bridge program. That begins with a reading and study skills class, a three credit course, which they take in their very first semester. They're assigned a mentor and several tutors. That class meets every day of the week, and it's very intense, and that reading and study skills class, along with any other prerequisite courses they might need to take, they might have to take a uh, an intro to college writing course or an intro to college algebra course. So those are prerequisite courses that uh, uh, precede their general educational courses. Now they all come with credits, regular credits that will be applied to the students, 120 credits they need to graduate. So that's the good news. Yeah. But it is required for them to build up their skill set to be successful in college. Yes. That's really the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bridge program then follows those students all the way through. In the second semester, they have an advanced reading and study skills class. And then uh, the bridge uh, director would follow those students all the way through as they persist through to graduation. And uh, students have been very, very successful. And uh, we've had... Uh, uh, great stories I can tell you over and over again. If we had more time, I would go into a lot of detail, but, but there's really a fantastic results in that when you can find a student who has the potential, but maybe just for whatever reason was off track in high school and we can offer them the opportunity to attend the University of Dubuque. But I would tell you, and I would tell your students, those spaces are limited. You can't do it for everyone. And so, uh, it's really a lot more important for them to get good grades right. and not have to be entered into that program if they don't have to. Yeah. So, uh, you know, again, looking at the transcript and getting a sense of the whole person and through the application, we really learn a lot about the student. You can uh, be sure that Bob Brocious reads every one of those applications personally and the admission committee will make a recommendation, but ultimately I have to make the decision about whether a student can uh, be admitted to the University of Dubuque. And uh, so students will immediately get an email from me stating uh, that they've been accepted for admission, uh, give them the conditions of the admission if there are any, and uh, we'll talk about you know sort of next steps depending on, on where they're at. Uh, but going back to the transcript, I would also say you know, what we're looking for is we're looking for them to take uh, a college-bound curriculum. We're looking for those four years of English, 
We're looking for those uh, four years of math. We're looking for uh, three or four years of, of science, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, we understand whatever the minimums are uh, as far as graduation requirements. We'll accept that, you know, for your high school. And it might be different than a, a high school here in Dubuque, Iowa or in Chicago. And, and so we're, we're always willing to accept what is acceptable at that high school for graduation. However, we are going to look very hard at what the sequencing was, and that's important to us. So, yeah. yeah. So if um, a student is admitted um, under the regular process yep. and they're finding that they're struggling a bit or they need some assistance, um, is there a way for them to get that assistance? Oh, absolutely. We have a wonderful academic success center here at the university for all students. And this is not uncommon. Uh, most colleges will have one. Mm -hmm. What might be uncommon is our faculty and what we call caring intrusiveness. And our faculty will apply caring intrusiveness to ensure that our students know where that academic success center is located so that the faculty will encourage the student to and will help them make that connection in the academic success center. We have professional tutors. We have a writing center where students can have all of their papers reviewed before they submit them. Uh, they have uh, tutors in every academic area. Uh, some of those, again, are peer tutors and some are professional tutors. But all of those resources are available to all students at the university. And they're available for students who need to get a passing grade, and they're available to students who want to get an A. So I think that that's the important thing to remember is that all of those resources are uh, available for all of your students, and uh, we encourage students to take advantage of them as early as possible. Right. <laughs> and not, not wait until <laughs> right before finals. Exactly. You know, to go yes. try to make it all up. I <laughs> that's think that's awesome. That's also important. Yeah. yeah. But it's a great it's a great resource, a great tool. We also have our TRIO program located mm -hmm. in the Academic Success Center. Mm -hmm. So the TRIO program is a federally funded program for students that um, might might have been admitted in the bridge program. They could be first generation students. They could be students with high high financial need. They, they don't have the, the financial means to uh, 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 pay for their own education and they need some additional help in that area. Mm -hmm. So the TRIO program is a fantastic way for us to help those students along and uh, really encourage their success, their persistence through college and their success ultimately. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, and speaking of financial, um, a few weeks ago we got an email from the University of Dubuque um, and it talked about increased financial aid. Um, so if you would talk a little bit about that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'll talk in general terms about the way financial aid is done because I think that's critical, that's really important. But, but I'll talk specifically about what my message was and I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, here at the University of Dubuque, we have always been very interested in Dodd students for what they bring to the University of Dubuque. And hundreds of them over the years, uh, the more than 15 years that I've been working with Dodd students, hundreds of students have come to the University of Dubuque and been very, very successful. Mm -hmm. And we've always had a special uh, financial award for Dodds students, and that's called the Dodds Partnership Award. So we had a Dodds Partnership Award, which uh, would been would always be added to an academic merit award. Uh, the merit award is is what measured by their their cumulative grade point average. And uh, again, we don't tie it to the ACT. Because, again, what I said about that being a moment in time. Right. But we tie the Academic Merit Award specifically to the grade point average. So at the University of Dubuque, we have various levels. The highest level of Academic Merit Award is a Heritage Society scholarship. And that's $15,000 per year uh, to a student who comes to the University of Dubuque. And um, all of our merit awards uh, at all the various levels by the way, are uh, awarded to the student for all four years without regard to their grade point average at the University of Dubuque. Now, I would qualify that by saying 
they have to remain a viable student. So they have to be qualified to remain as a student at the university. So they have to meet those requirements. But for example, the qualifications for a Heritage Society scholarship is a 3.8 grade point average, high school grade point average. That's a pretty substantial grade point average, as you know. So we did not, we, we wanted this to be a merit award for their high school accomplishments and not tied to what they were going to do uh, after they got to the University of Dubuque. So that's the reason why we don't have a specific requirement to, to maintain that, that scholarship. So we think that was a, an important decision and really supports the student's persistence through college in that respect. And, you know, so if, if you have your best students, your best students certainly can get a great award. Uh, you know, we would give them the $15,000 a Heritage Society scholarship, and then we would add another three thousand to that in the Dodds Partnership Award, so they'd get eighteen thousand uh, dollars. But what we realized was that uh, we were leaving out quite a number of students in that formula that uh, that might not be able to attend the University of Dubuque because of cost, and so we wanted to do something, uh, and we've been wanting to do this for a while. It became possible. Uh, through a, a, a fantastic gift to the university recently. And so we were able to uh, make all awards for students who come to the University of Dubuque this fall. Uh, for Dodds graduates, all students would receive an award of $20,000 from the University of Dubuque. That's amazing. So, <laughs> so Regardless of their academic merit, they would get their regular merit scholarships. We're going to still send you uh, a Heritage Society certificate for that student if they if they earn the Heritage Society scholarship. But every student who is qualified to enroll at the University of Dubuque uh, from a Dodds High School this year is going to get a twenty thousand dollar award from the University of Dubuque. Now that's in addition to federal aid that they might be eligible for. So if a student is eligible for the federal Pell Grant, they would get that in addition to it. Um, and that's how we decided to try to make a bigger impact on students to make it possible for them to come. Um, now, to put that in perspective, our cost here at the University of Dubuque is uh, $39,150 this year. So almost forty. So. So it gives you a pretty good sense, you know, $20,000 off of that is about half of the total cost right. involved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I look around public colleges and universities right. around the country, for a public college or university, for a student to live on campus in state tuition, usually they're paying about sixteen dollars to $18,000 a year. So uh, that puts us in the ballpark, yeah. I would say. And you know, if, if a student really wants to come to a small private university and they find that this is a better environment for them, we, we felt like that award would make it possible for them to come. Definitely. Yes. Well, we hope so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, do you have any final words for us? Well, I do. I would just be encouraging for your students to work really hard academically be involved in their community, uh, take advantage of all of the opportunities that are presented to them uh, living in South Korea, and, and uh, take advantage of all of the cultural exchanges. And I, 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 having been there myself many times, I, I know what opportunities are available to your students, and they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I say that, I want students to really take advantage of that, is because when they come to the University of Dubuque or they go to any other college or university, they're going to be able to share their perspectives and experiences. And those perspectives and experiences are going to be valued by the community, by their friends, by the faculty, by everyone at the college that they go to. And, and it's going to be a huge advantage to your students, uh, you know, because of their experience. And I know it's difficult. I know that it's challenging, uh, you know, living uh, overseas and, you know, sometimes your parents are deployed and it's very challenging. Uh, sometimes you move two or three times in your high school career. All of that is challenging. But uh, what I often told my daughters, who had the same life, by the way, having retired from the Army myself, 
uh, I told them, you know, it would make them stronger and they would have a much, much richer life as a result. And uh, they have confirmed that for me now, of course, that they're they're grown and have their own families. Awesome. But uh, I, I just encourage your students to work hard and uh, do well. Uh, and, uh, of course, stay out of trouble. Don't yes. get into trouble, <laughs> you know, because we'll look at that as well. Right. That's part of the application. And uh, we would be so excited to have any of your students come to our college and uh, bring those experiences with them. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, we, well, thank you for having me. Thank you for your time today. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I just hope that uh, we can make arrangements for our new international admission counselor to visit your school in the near future. Me too. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Hudson. All right. Thank you. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>